if you've driven past the castle of Goodhope over the last few years, never mind the last weeks or months, you would have noticed that there is a, a growing community of homeless people living in the open area outside on the lawn area. I think it's very indicative of the growing level of homelessness and poverty that we've seen in Cape Town and the CBD, particularly after um, the COVID-19 lockdown. It is a situation in which a number of parties have been trying to resolve for a very, very long time now. And today we're joined by Calvin Gilfellan, who's the Chief Executive Officer of the Castle of Good Hope, as well as um, the Executive Mayor of the City of Cape Town, Jordan Hill-Lewis. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Thank you so much for wanting to participate in this conversation. Because often when we have intergovernmental disputes or various government departments, there is often a, an acrimony particularly when it comes to who has the responsibility and speaking to both Calvin and the mayor, I know that there is, um, yes, maybe a, a difference in opinion, but I think there is a, 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 um, a want to find a, a resolution. Calvin, I'll start with you. And thanks so much for joining us here uh, this morning. But over what period have you seen a growing number of homelessness around the castle of Good Hope? It is a very important legacy building in the city of Cape Town. It performs a very important tourist function. You as CEO have tried to create it as an open space of not just a place of painful memory, but a place of celebration, concerts, festivals, all sorts of parties happening at the Castle of Goodo, but at the same time dealing with the real issue of poverty and homelessness in the city of Cape Town. Good morning. Since when would you consider the issue of encampment around the Castle of Good Hope to become a serious issue warranting a response from those in charge. Good morning, Lester, and good morning, um, listeners, and thanks for organizing my second uh, coffee date with the mayor. I was <laughs> quite surprised. My first uh, physical meeting with the mayor, so well done, Lester. <laughs> you got we, me we, there. We bring people <laughs> I know, together. I know. I was listening when I was driving from Paul um, and uh, focusing on the amazing women and I was thinking of the women not only living there at the corner of uh, Castle and Strand Street now on, but also the women who lived at the entrance from the back. You know there's a back entrance where you come in from the military side? So when you ask me about the issue of homelessness, when I started there in 2013, there were about 200 people living under the bridge. And through intergovernment co cooperation with, I think it's uh, Eldman J.P. Smith, and with the, who is now General Fanny and ourselves, we, we, we've uh, successfully moved those informal dwellers. Mm. But you know the history of the new dwellers at the corner of the street. That, mm. that's, that's a direct um, legacy of, of, of the COVID-19 pandemic, but also an indictment on all of us that after 30 years of democracy, we haven't democratized access to housing opportunities. And I think of uh, me running a building of almost 400 years in, uh, you know, and, and, and I think of, and I think back of the, how, how the Cape of Gouda was established and how um, as a society, we, we not always have that will to deal with these things. There is the will, but often we don't have the means and the means of cooperation to deal with in an amicable way. So it is in my interest in the tourists' interest and in my staff's interest that we resolve the issue of the homeless people at the corner of Darling, sorry, of Castle and uh, Strand Street as a matter of urgency. Mm -hmm. And I've been in contact with the, not formally, with the uh, Department of Public Works and I understand there is moves afoot to get uh, an official, uh, what do you call it, a court order to, uh, to move mm -hmm. the um, informal dwellers to a place of decent mm. habitability. Jordan, you of yeah. course yeah. share this concern with Calvin. We are deeply concerned about the, the homeless situation around the castle. It's one of the uh, major uh, hotspots or areas of concern around the city. There are uh, several others, as you know, and we've been engaged in an 18-month process of painstaking work uh, over the last while to build alternative accommodation and then approach the courts for the for the support that we need we are on the cusp of getting that where it is our land 
Uh, I really am confident that in the very near future we will have that, uh, that court order. We don't have that for the castle because, of course, it isn't our land. It's, it's military land. And, uh, but we have been pressing really hard on uh, the Department of Public Works and the Department of the Military to get the, to get the process going. Uh, and Kelvin is right that we are finally getting a response from the Department of Public Works, but not without a bit of an uphill battle, I must say, uh, Lester. It took us about nine months to get an answer uh, at first. We are now getting answers. We, do, we have heard just in the last, uh, I would say, 14 days that they have appointed a, a, a attorneys. Uh, and uh, as we did right at the beginning, we've, we've pledged our support. We will help them with uh, doing – we, in fact, already have – help them with doing the surveys of everyone living there, uh, getting the, the needs of, of, of what all, all of those people need. So we're prepared to help, but ultimately it is their land and, and they've got to take responsibility. In dealing with the issue of, of, of people who experience homelessness, it's, it's always been a conversation around the balance of rights. It's the, it's, it's, the, it's the balance of people not being criminalized for their poverty, but also at the same time, the, the rights of people to enjoy the city and enjoy the space that we ultimately share. In, in, in the city's response, the city has been accused, this administration to a lesser extent, but the previous uh, administration saying that you're, you're merely criminalizing people for being poor. We have a housing shortage in the city of, of Cape Town, broadly in South Africa, as well, and that there is very little other option for people who experience homelessness. Your, your response in the balancing of people's rights to accommodation, to fair and adequate housing, but also on the rights of all of us to enjoy public open space in the city. Well, look, in, in some respect, I've got 600,000 people in Cape Town who are living in informal settlements who are waiting for access to, to housing. And so we have a much, much bigger issue on, on access to affordable housing and government-subsidized housing than just the... Uh, the, those who are experiencing homelessness and living in public spaces. The point that we have made is that you do not have the right uh, to occupy a public space which is meant for the public at large and reserve it strictly for yourself while also consistently refusing offers of assistance. So we have put a huge amount of money and, and resources into those offers of assistance, what we call the care interventions. And uh, over the last two years, 253 million rand. Uh, just over a quarter of a billion rand in alternative accommodation, social uh, welfare support, uh, drug addiction support, uh, access to job uh, opportunities, personal development plans, uh, you name it, food support. Really, by far the most comprehensive uh, suite of, of care interventions offered to the homeless in South Africa. And if you are consistently turning down that, that offer of support for understandable reasons but not acceptable reasons mm. uh, then then you have to you, you almost need that independent third party that's actually part of the role of the state the state has got to come as that independent third party and conduct an intervention in your life and say there is help available for you you must now accept that help we are ordering you to do so how do you dealing go ahead you can respond to that Calvin. Well, I, I respect what the mayor says but once you engage the people at a personal level, and you, and, you, and you alluded to that, and you understand their personal histories, um, there are two things that come out for me. They, they, they always say to us they want to be close to water, and they were, uh, want to be close to the, what we call the scuttling economy. Mm. You understand what I, I mean by that? Yes. The, so those the, are the, the two. The informal hustle Yes, yes, at, at, a, at a very low level. And, and if you listen to those stories, and I'm not, I'm a, I'm a, you know, I'm a humanist, I'm a former activist. So, so when you listen to the stories, you understand why some of them would reject the, what, I've, what, I, what I would say is, is from the bottom of the heart intervention from the city beyond what the means that they have to, uh, you know, supply in terms. Because there are three tiers of government that should look after the, the, the vulnerable and the, the poor and the marginalized, including us, because mm -hmm. we're part of national government. And there was even a stage when, when it was so bad where I was thinking, you know, we had discussions, maybe we should look for room in the castle. Mm -hmm. Because people see a castle and juxtaposed to that, they see extreme poverty mm -hmm. and they, they don't understand it. But then, you know, the whole Defense Endowment Act 
and the fact that you have uh, lives, you know, a living soldier complement at the castle, you know, discarded that whole idea. But it is, it is a, I, I think it's a political thing, it's an administrative thing, but it's also a highly personal social issue that we, we, we need to address. Is, and, is there, yeah. is there, is there a, 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 a relationship between the castle and the people who live around that area. I always talk and I see, when I seek and I interact with people who experience homelessness in, in my community, I, I treat them as, as a neighbor. They're a neighbor yeah. who does not necessarily have a formal dwelling, but they share the space. And I usually find that there's a better relationship in how they treat my property and my street, particularly on Bin Collection yeah. Day, with a greater yeah. level of respect, if I say, I see you, hello, my name's Lester, mm. you can eke out whatever you need to eke out to, to Skarl, but please respect my space. Just looking at the state of yeah. outside the castle, which in the city of Cape Town is a very important yeah. economic driver in, 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 in uh, the tourism economy, is a, the a relationship with those who are living outside. Yeah, we, we, we meet with them. In fact, the Homeless Coalition meets in the car, uh, will meet in the castle now and then, and we also engage them, especially Solma Bele, who's responsible for heritage management, engages them. But the issue is there are powerful NGOs working with them, both in the legal side and in the social development side. And as soon as you have an additional kind of almost intervention, uh, people st start to question your motives, you know, are you, are you part of us or against us? You, you allow us inside to have our meetings inside, but on the other, other hand, you are uh, putting out a tender for fencing to fence us off. You know, it's, it's, it's that, those kind of di dynamics. And sometimes empathy is not enough. Sometimes we need to say, uh, maybe a meeting with uh, Minister Sisle Zigalala is more important than, than this, but you can't divorce the human and the empathy and the emotional element mm. of being poor, especially if it's juxtaposed to these high-rising buildings mm. and the history where the castle represents in the minds of some of the constituencies mm. that I serve. Maya? If I just can briefly make the point that we must not confuse empathy with permissiveness. Mm. Empathy doesn't mean that you can do whatever you like in a public space in Cape Town because we uh, we are so concerned about your personal circumstance. Sometimes the most empathic thing that you can do for someone is that outside intervention into that person's life to really set them on a better path. The personal development plans that they get signed up to in our safe spaces, for example, with a professional social worker that meets with them if they want to on a daily basis, daily access to a social worker, the job placement uh, that they get in our uh, in our homeless job placement program. The access that they get to social grants, we help them access their 350 social grants if they don't have it or their ID books or whatever. Mm. These are empathic mm. interventions that yeah. set them on the, uh, a better course. I often say uh, to those NGOs in particular, and I agree with Calvin's point there, the least empathic thing that you can do, even though you think it is the most empathic in the moment, is to help that person to stay in a destructive context on uh, on the street when there is a better alternative available. Uh, Calvin, a question here. Uh, someone says that, that, they, that they move through the CBD on foot every day and they walk across the Grand Parade and up Batonkant Street. And as much as sh they can see the humanness of someone who is experiencing poverty, they also say that they know a place to avoid based on personal safety. Many people that they say yeah. have been mugged, used as an uh, era, used as a, as a place where people can not only just get but also use yeah. substances. In terms of the, the, the physical safety around the cars are concerned, are you, based on this, this, this listener's message? Absolutely. Uh, let's say you will remember when I was still um, head of tourism in, in the province, we spoke about the Eastern Precinct and the, and the decay. I, um, I think uh, Andrew Borain was still the, the, the municipal, what do you For call the it? CID. The manager, yeah. yeah. And there was a plan to deal with the, what we call the brown issues, the, cr the crime and grime and, and that in, 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 in that scene. And I see positive signs. I, the movement of 
Cape Town tourism there, the bus terminal, etc. But when you have a convergence of, of tra a transport node, especially where working class and uh, people of the lower uh, echelons of society comes together, you have elements infiltrating there. In fact, I told you that I was personally involved in a these uh, people back in front of the visitors and they pull their chains down in a personal pursuit of that person and we caught him, a Tanzanian, and three months afterward they're still roaming the street. So, so we, I think we need to up this. So we have a meeting set with the military police for today and then I've also spoken to the new um, station commissioner of, of, of Cape Town to, to deal with the issue because, you know, they're very clever. They know that the, uh, there's security on that side of the Grand Parade, but on this side of our, us, on the red paving, there's, there's, there's nobody there. So, so it's about how do we tactically mm. respond and also on Strand Street. So it's a major concern. Mm. Say, say yes to the listener. Uh, I, I agree. A uh, listener here, Mr. Mayor, says the mayor is preoccupied with uh, public space in tourism areas. What about public spaces in Kyalich and other predominantly black and colored areas in the city? Uh, he seems blatantly not interested in supporting homelessness there. Your response to that listener says that you, you concentrate... Supporting homelessness? No, 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 that, that you're not interested in supporting the homeless in those areas and that, that you are concerned only with public spaces um, in tourist areas, the inner yeah. city, basically. Well, I would just direct the listener to the very frequent communications that I put out on our housing program. In fact, just last week we had uh, a, a major advancement with a 1,800 units. Uh, I think you and I spoke about this uh, earlier in the week, actually. 1,800 units social housing development uh, uh, released last week, Thursday. That has got rentals starting at uh, 700 rand a month for a proper apartment unit. Uh, that is just one of many, many of those social housing developments that we have uh, released in the last two years. Uh, it's, a, it's a monthly focus of mine to accelerate, uh, speed up our social housing program uh, across the city, whether it be in Salt River or yesterday we were talking about a new property in Somerset West that is going to be social housing, a very large one as well. So, no, I just I, I think that's, that's just a, a, an easily repeatable narrative that the listener is repeating without any fact. I, I can also attest that the city center is particular tra particularly changing. And, yes, it's very expensive to, to live and call the CBD your home, but also plenty of student accommodation. Particularly uh, in Adley Street, we have the student station, yeah. the station area. In various blocks, you have student accommodation that's been that that that, that, that is coming up. These are obviously students who, who get grants from NISFAS, don't have much, and and they are now the occupants. They are the the people who call the CBD home. And there's also should be interest placed in their safe, safety, their ability to walk around, particularly mm. at night, in the CBD. Uh, absolutely, absolutely, and and unfortunately, part of what what we call that scuttle economy uh, is it does often involve elements of what we may call a petty criminality. It's it's that chain snatching. It's uh, it's you know taking your your cell phone or whatever. It might not be violent mm -hmm. crime, but it does make people feel unsafe, and it does make them less less willing to use the CBD or to live uh, in or near the CBD. So we do have to address that. Uh, just just final remarks, uh, Calvin. There does seem to be a, a commitment to work with the city, with national government, and also um, people who, NGO, the NGO sector, who support people who are experiencing homelessness. But there is a commitment intergovernmentally to work and, 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 and help not resolve a, a problem, but help people. Never was not one. I think by bringing us together, we we understand that we sometimes have to agree for different reasons, but we do agree that there, is, there needs to be a, a, a you know a solution found to this problem. So so there was never not a commitment. We reported to Parliament last week. You know we report to Parliament for our annual report, and uh, some of the opposition parties ask us about what are we personally doing almost outside of our mandate. And we, I reported then that we already put out the tender for, for the fence, but that has now lapsed because we were anticipating that this thing will be resolved in April. So now we have to re-go through the whole process. So, so whatever I can do, 
at national and provincial level to make sure that all three tiers work together. You, you, you had my commitment in our last interview in April, so you still have it today. Mr. Mayor, too. Mr. Mayor? I, I think the, whenever it comes to relying on a national government department to get something moving, uh, we haven't yet spoken about the District 6 land. There's a tragedy happening there, Lester. That I've, I've raised the alarm with the National Minister of Land Reform who owns those properties many times now. We are busy losing that crucial land reform land to uh, continuously new structures being erected there every day. That's, again, I can't go there and solve that for the National Department of Land Reform. They've got to take action. Mm. It just takes way too long. We took nine months to get an answer on the, on the castle. We now do finally have one, and I think we are moving. But from our side, our commitment is to lead with, with alternative accommodation so that every person that we apply for a court order against, there is an alternative available for that person, and it is a caring dignified alternative. John Neil Lewis, uh, Calvin Gilfallon, really appreciate your time taking time out of your day.